Well, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name is Louie. Hope you're having yourself a fantastic day. Welcome back to part two of our series, How to Sell Your Cards Online. If you haven't checked out part one, make sure you do so, like right here or here. I'll put it up there somewhere. Uh, make sure you check that out. In that part one, what we talked about is that it's selling cards online is actually an investment in yourself. We all talk about investing in cards or collecting cards, but at the end of the day, you're going to need an opportunity to sell those cards and i actually believe that in this amazing hobby we have this opportunity to allow the hobby to pay for itself and that if you create an online platform for yourself to sell cards you actually can fund your own hobby which makes that question of should i build that next commander deck or should i uh, buy that next collectible card a little bit easier if you're not digging into your own bank account so make sure you check out that video about investing yourself and that question should i sell cards if you haven't uh, but now we are going to start talking about building an online reputation and actually physically shipping and selling the cards. I'm actually going to show you the three ways that I ship cards every day. It's going to be a great opportunity for you to see how I do it. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then I would love to hear how you do it and the difference uh, in our techniques. I would love to hear that in the comment section. But if you are considering this, and I think you should, if you're considering this, I firmly believe that the first thing you need to do is to set the goals for yourself of what you want to accomplish. This is no different than any other self-help thing or a desire to lose weight or uh, whatever it might be for you. If you want to accomplish this goal of investing in yourself and creating an online platform to sell cards, you have to set some goals so that you can obtain some things in order to do it more effectively and more efficiently. Uh, so my first goal for everyone is going to be to reach level four as a seller on TCG player, because I think that's the perfect starter goal. Now, beyond that, you may have goals of starting a business. You may have goals of paying for your next modern deck. You may have goals of just, you know, whatever, and just moving the cards off of your countertop in order to clear up some space. It doesn't matter what your goals are past that. For the premise of this video, your first goal is going to be to reach seller level four on TCG player because at seller level four on TCG player, you get access to a lot of things that will make your life easier. Things like mass price that automatically you can set to automatically uh, update the prices of your card to like match TCG player every week and every day. Uh, there's really cool things that you get there at seller level four. You can do imports and exports and all sorts of stuff. So that's going to be the first goal is reaching that seller level four. So um, I'm gonna assume that everybody can figure out how to set up a TCG player store and all the other stuff kind of applies to eBay as well. I'm gonna assume you can navigate or look up online how to set up a store. And then I'm gonna assume that you can actually figure out how to list cards. If you don't know how to do that, it's pretty simple and straightforward on the websites. They really guide you through it. Uh, it doesn't seem like they're really the type of video for this channel. Uh, but then once you have the sales that's where we're going to pick up now um and and that's where we're going to pick up in selling so before we get there i do want to say that what i'm about to show you in my opinion is like the top level because i want to do things with excellence i don't want to send a card to somebody and them get that and not be confident in it and uh wonder if the seller really cared about them i want you to receive a card if i ship it to you and say wow that seller really cares and i'm sure that they put the time and energy into getting this card to me as safe as possible and i think that that has resulted in my store it, with less complaints, less negative feedback. When we do make a mistake as a store, it results in people coming and talking to us about it rather than just leaving a negative review. And it provides a better user experience at the end. Uh, and I really believe that if you put some energy in the front, it actually saves you a lot of time and money on the backside in the end. So uh, there may be easier ways or smaller ways or shorter ways to ship a card, uh, but I think that this is the best. And I actually really believe if you set this up, it will save you time it will actually save you money and it will be a great way to ship cards so um there are three different scenarios in selling cards that you will run into uh from where i land uh one is an order under 25 dollars with like one two maybe three cards okay uh so i've got some mock orders here the second thing that you will see uh is orders over 25 dollars 
uh, that have, uh, you know, th that will require you to use tracking numbers. So this one is an order for $31. Uh, and then the third option or the third card order that you'll see often is uh, orders under $25 uh, that have multiple, like lots of cards. Like this one has eight cards in it. Okay. Uh, now, $25, why that? Well, for us, anyway, for me, I have decided that the $25 limit is the threshold for me to use tracked shipping. On TCG Player, any order under $5, they're going to automatically add $1, I believe it is now, to the order, and the buyer will actually pay for a dollar of shipping. Now, if the order goes over $5, or at least this is how we have it set up and kind of is the standard for TCG Player, the order goes over $5, nobody paid shipping on this. And so you as a buyer, as a seller, eat the cost of shipping. Now, I particularly think that uh, order under $25, I ship it with a plain white envelope because um, it's going to cost about 4 to $5 to ship a card with tracked shipping. And so at the end of the day, uh, I, I have confidence that I am saving money as a result uh, and I am losing, you know, you may have buyers who say you never got the card at the under $25 thing. Um, yeah, you may have some of that, but at the end of the day, you're saving a lot of money on shipping labels and all that stuff. So $25 is our threshold here. So let's start this way. Let's show you an order that's under $25 and that's two cards. Here's how I ship this. Now, we print off packing shipping uh, shipping packing slips for every single order because it makes it easier to ship the cards. I know that these cards that I put here will go to this address and they actually make this perfect for you to fold and to put into an envelope. So I'll show you how we fold. Uh, we fold this upside down like this. We put that on top. You bring this right down here, right about where the order number is. And you flip this back over. And right here, you have a really easy thing that you can then slide into an envelope with a mail or with a um, with a window. Now it costs us a total. I have this written down of seventy six cents, including the stamp and including the paper and including the ink to ship a card like this. So uh, basically, how we do it. We're gonna pretend that these are the two cards. Uh, we take the cards, if there's two, I would face them face out, especially if they're foil. I want the foil on uh, touching only a sleeve. You put them like this. And then these are called chip mailers. And uh, you can get these on eBay. Um, they're about, you know, if you buy them in bulk, they are about three, three cents each. Um, they're actually what they use to put cards in like a uh, vending machine thing that comes out. So they go in there just like this. And then we have these little team bags that are called, um, they are from Spartan industrial three by five little baggies. It goes in there just like so. Then you fold your paper, how we folded it again, face down, you fold it up, you fold this down over there. This goes in here. And then we actually tape right there. I don't have any tape with me in here, uh, but we, we put a little piece of tape right there. And then you can just take that and put it in the envelope like so. Uh, and then these actually even adhere to themselves pretty easily. So boom, done. And at the end, I have a stamper that we just stamp our return address in the top and you place a stamp right there. And then this is good to go easily done. You know, the cards aren't going anywhere. You don't have to do any writing. It really saves you time. The printing off of things. I know people complain about ink and paper. It really only adds a, like five to 10 cents, depending on what you're getting your stuff uh, to the order. And it results in you spending a lot less time. Can you imagine if you had to write out every order and then write your return address? It's crazy. So uh, you can get these stamps at simplystamps.com. It's pretty easy. Okay, but what if there's like eight to nine cards, but again, the order is under that $25 threshold? Well, that's where these things come in. Uh, these are basically nine pocket folders that I have just taken and used leftover actually that, you know, I, they're relatively clean ones. I don't use the dirty ones. So nine pocket folder. Here is eight cards. One, two, three. I would take the eight cards. I put them into three even piles and then I put them into top loaders or not top loaders, uh, penny sleeves like this. These take a little bit more time to ship. I hate these orders. They're not super fun to ship. Uh, they don't happen quite as often. They happen a ton in Pokemon. Uh, in Magic, they don't happen quite as often. In Pokemon, if you have a bunch of like cards from the same set, 
oftentimes the, you'll get these with set collectors um, and if you do that in magic like we don't list cards that are under um we don't list cards that are under 50 cents so we don't get a whole lot of these uh, but you can see this order was eight cards all under 50 cents anyway uh so we're gonna pretend that these are the right cards they're not again the same exact thing happens you just fold your paper twice boom this case we're just gonna put these straight like this again i put a little piece of tape right there popping in like this back on an envelope pretty basic pretty easy an easy way to ship cards again that are um under 25 dollars but multiple cards and you put your little stamp there oftentimes we'll stamp those before because that doesn't work right way very well and you put your stamp on there it costs 76 cents to ship something like this that is my bulk you know i'm buying stuff in bulk i'm buying envelopes in the 5000 for 238 dollars i'm buying the chipboard folders in 10000 uh, lots for 320 dollars i'm buying spartan industrial um the the sleeves um on amazon though i mean everything i'm getting you can get for basically the same pricing you just have to buy it in kind of a bulk form um, if you've got friends that are doing this, it's a great opportunity to just share supplies and buy things. All right. Then the last option, obviously, is if a card is over $25, uh, you want to do it tracked. You want to make sure that it gets there. Um, and that one is, you know, again, pretty similar. Uh, you're going to take the card. You're going to put it in a, uh, a penny sleeve. Uh, in this case, we use top loaders. Uh, if you have a bunch of top loaders sitting in your house, make a box of them. I don't do, I don't like any tape on my top loaders. When I get a card that has tape on it, it's just, it, it causes discomfort to me. I don't want my cards getting tapey and all that stuff. So, uh, these industrial mailers that they call them, uh, it's a really, really easy way to, um, ship a card. It goes right in the top loader or in the uh poly mailer these poly mailers are 16 cents each on amazon 500 for 80 dollars uh that's that's where i get them top loaders you can get them on amazon 200 for 26 dollars that's 13 cents a, a thing uh penny sieves are literally a penny those spartan industrial three by five bags again are two cents each uh, in this case uh, i usually fold them like this i put the mailer just like so and then this is how we you know we put the label in our case we do shipping labels with a four by eight shipping label thing uh in your case you could just print it off on your printer and you could actually cut it we're doing volume you know we're shipping out a bunch of these a day so it's easier for us to use the printing label so that's it that's how we ship things i mean it take you five minutes to learn this it's not that hard uh, it's a little bit of cost up front to get the stuff these are um you know the total number for you sorry for my terrible handwriting i should have done this a little bit better but uh the total amount is really not that much it costs about uh four dollars to ship with a bubble mailer if it's three or four dollars for the uh for the you know the tracking and the plain white envelope costs about 76 cents and 60 cents of that is in your stamp so if you have a way of getting like cheaper stamps it really saves a lot of money um at the end of the day though what really matters and the reason you know you don't have to do it exactly like that but the reason that it matters to have excellence is that when you receive and you're going to make mistakes when you're shipping things you're going to make mistakes but when you receive this envelope and you see that it you know that it looks professional that there's a packing list i can see what i ordered from the seller and i can check it to make sure that it's all there when i receive an envelope and it's just got like a name on it that it's not even from a seller and there's no there's like just cards thrown in it i don't have confidence that they sent me exactly what i asked for this gives your buyer confidence that what you sent them is accurate and it, it provides a great experience for them when they're opening something uh it, it it gives them confidence even before they open the package that what they are receiving is good and it's it was cared for and it was uh delicately handled and it wasn't just tossed in there like it didn't matter and that's going to result in better end of end of end user conversations if you mess up on something or if you ship the wrong card that kind of a attention to detail is going to result in that buyer saying hey it's okay uh just send me the right card i'll send you the other card back 
that kind of thing. So uh, by taking the extra step and really caring about the way that you ship things, I really think that it adds a lot of value to yourself as a business, as a brand, and it will result in better feedback on the back end as well. And that usually results in more sales and that kind of thing. So that is how I ship my cards. Um, and it, again, the most important thing is that you set those goals. And I really hope that this gives you some ideas and understanding on how to reach that first goal of reaching seller level four so that you can kind of start this business and, and really kind of grow. Not Maybe it's not a business. Maybe it's just an ecosystem for yourself to get some money and put it back into the hobby. So let me know if there's something uh, you have questions on or if I didn't, if there's something else that you would do as a result of things. If there's another solution, make sure you check the comment section and see what people are saying. Uh, and I hope that this was helpful for you. We're going to continue this series in the next part with what do you do on the back end? How do you manage some of the organization of cards? How do you manage some of the emails and the, you know, the personal interactions with people when they don't get what they want? How do you block buyers on TCG player who maybe aren't doing truthful things and are, you know, just scamming you out of your plain white envelope orders. There's ways to manage all that stuff. And that's what we're going to talk about in, uh, in the next video, video number three. So hopefully that was helpful for you. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you want to share this with people, that's super helpful. Helpful. We're also almost at 10,000 subscribers. We're on our way to 10,000 subscribers uh, and we're going to open up a box of Mirrodin. So if you've enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment in the comment section. I appreciate you. And most importantly, remember to be kind to the people around you because it's our interactions with other people that is our legacy that we leave here on this earth. So uh, remember to be kind to the people around you. We'll see you again next video.